people are saying free, free, freedom, freedom, freedom. They're not free. We're prisoner between two breaths. We are not free. Our reality is not shown. There are signs to that. Allah's reality is not shown. But can we say there are no signs to Allah's existence? Everything is a sign to Allah's existence. Correct or no? If that reality is shown to you, will you believe it? Then again, who is going to show you that? And how do you know whatever is being shown in front of you? It is the truth. Somebody can show you something. They, uh, these days especially, one person, maybe 40, 50, 60 years ago, they say everybody has 15 minutes of freedom, uh, 15 minutes of fame, correct? Let's see, 15 minutes of fame, everyone. Now they stretch that longer because everybody wants to be famous. Everybody who has Facebook, they want to be known. They want to be what they call today. If you are on the online and you are showing yourself and you are trying to influence people, what they say you are? Influencer, correct? You're influencer. People are no longer satisfied with just 15 minutes to be famous. They want to be famous forever. So I'm seeing people especially uh, we can understand if unbelievers concentrating on the physical appearance, unbelievers. Believers now, they're concentrating on physical appearance, especially the women. Putting something here, putting something there, putting something here, putting something there, transforming themselves and say, now this is the real me. Correct or no? And then they're taking this, taking this, taking this, and suddenly you see this is the reality. Especially they show all this stuff with a lot of Chinese people. They say, wow, this one looks like this. They take off everything and say, whoa, this looks like this. So which one is the reality? So if somebody comes to you and check, 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 does something to you and show you a mirror and say, look, this is you. Somebody come and does something to you and show this is you. How do you know that somebody is good, he's bringing out your reality and he's showing you that? Maybe he's showing you your ego. Maybe he's showing you your dunya. And he's showing you that reflection of yourself. This is the problem. Everybody wants to see the spirit, but nobody wants to see this dunya as is. As Allah is seeing this dunya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Prophet is saying, Allah does not give value to this world as he gives value to one wing of a mosquito. Especially in this century, it is all about satisfying your desire. If you have a desire, you must satisfy it. Doesn't matter what it is, you must satisfy it now. And they're telling everyone, you must. It's a desire, bro. Which prophet, which book is saying, you have a desire, you must satisfy it? There's a desire that is there. And in these days, they're showing desire as something that is what? Desirable. They even use that word. Desirable means, uh, I really like it. It's really good for me. Correct? But the desire in Islam, it means something that is no good. It's this confusion. It brings you away from Allah. Who? Now, when they enter into the spiritual way, they just want to see the spirit. But they don't want to see what is locking the spirit up in this lowest of the low. They don't want to see this asfal as safilin. They don't want to see this lowest of the low. They don't want to understand what is shaitan. They don't want to understand what is the ego that is worse than shaitan. They don't, they don't want to see this dunya. They want to see everything this, dunya, shaitan, hawa, and your nafs as something good. And on top of that, they say, I want my spirit. I want to see my spirit. The one who doesn't understand yet 
from his physical form and his desire and what the spirit is, he cannot tell the difference that time, anyone can fool him. I was having this conversation with someone and saying, yeah, been to this Sufi group, been to that Sufi group. Yes, they're very spiritual. So they're speaking about love all the time and tolerance and this and that and harmony, love, 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 love. But he said, but I also notice their ego is wild, is uncontrollable. What is that? They don't admit that they have anger because they're already saints, you see? Spiritual people. They don't admit that the anger comes with hundreds and thousands of different ways of showing that anger. They don't understand that there is an arrogance. There is a stubbornness. There is all those wrong things that is coming from our ego. If you cannot see that, if you don't understand that, and you don't remove it, your spirit you can never see. And what you think is your spirit now, it is a trick. Follow those who ask you no fee. And they are on the level of guidance and safety. You cannot see your own spirit. You cannot. These eyes cannot see itself. The man's identity is in the face. Identity is in the face. That's why in Islam it is forbidden to smack the face, to box, to all these kinds of things. You understand? On the one hand, they're saying we're such good Muslims, number one. On the other hand, they're doing so many things, it's against the sunnah. Punching, punching on the face, you understand? It's forbidden, Prophet says don't. Because this is sacred. Man's identity is his face. You cannot see your own face, you can see everything else. You can see everything else, about, but you cannot see your face. You cannot see your identity, physical identity. These eyes, Allah did not create these eyes equipped to see itself. You have to have a medium. You have to have a reflection. And that reflection has to be a right reflection, cannot be a wrong reflection. If you see a mirror that is twisted a little bit, you're not going to believe this is me. No, this is a mirror. I'm not like that. You think if this physical eyes cannot see itself, the spiritual eyes is it be able to see itself. The believer doesn't look with his own eyes. How the believer looks? The believer looks with the nur of Allah. You understand? Ah, so how do you know now you're looking with the eyes of Allah? How do you know you're looking through the nur of Allah? How? If you don't have a guide, how are you going to know? Always you're going to judge yourself by yourself, using your own eyes, using your own senses, using your own idea of what is right and wrong. Never you're going to see through the eyes of your guide, never you're going to see through the eyes of the Prophet, never you're going to see through the eyes of Allah, never. Because your own sense is something else, the Prophet's sense is something else, Allah's sense is something else. So what prevents us from looking through the eyes of our Shaykh? That should be your question because the person refuses to submit his sight to his shaykh's sight. You understand? First you'll be able to see, then what you're going to see. Just because you're able to see properly doesn't mean whatever you're going to see is going to be beautiful, especially here living in this world. Whatever that is beautiful, Allah has created that beauty. And mankind is just busy destroying it, that's all. Making something and saying, I make this, isn't this beautiful, I make this. So we cannot now. We are here. Submission, Islam. Islam means you submit. Whatever that is given to you, you give it back. 
Allah is giving us sight, we say, it is better through your eyes, Ya Rabbi. Allah has given you intelligence, you say, it is better your intelligence, Ya Rabbi. You are the one who create the intelligence. Allah has given you life, and you take that life, and you say, I submit to you, Ya Rabbi, because you are the creator of life. You are high and you are Qayyum. This is the meaning of submission. This is the meaning of Islam. Islam doesn't mean I'm saying the Shahadat, I can live as I like. No. Not that kind of Muslim. Our kind of Muslim is the Prophet and the Sahabi Kiram. Inshallah. If we understand this, then it's easy. Then it's easy. How many times are you going to hear in the Ahir Zaman? The Shaykh is going to say, black is white and white is black. How many times are you hearing that? All the time. Seven years, 27 years, doesn't matter. Uh, he's saying, I'm seeing this is white. We're saying, it's not white. We're not even saying it's black. We're saying it's not white. You're seeing it with your eyes. It is white. It is not white. You must see according to my eyes. No. It is white. It's white, right? It's white. Isn't it white? Isn't it white? Isn't it white? Isn't it white? Going around everywhere saying, isn't this white? You already disconnected yourself. You're insisting on looking the way that you are looking. You're finished. You can ask the whole world. whole world can agree with you. You are finished. Because you disconnected yourself from looking through the eyes of your shaykh. Same thing shaitan did. Allah is saying, you bow down to me, now you bow down to Adam alayhi salam. Shaitan is saying, you make a mistake. I can bow down to you, you are Allah. You want me to bow down to this, this thing that is made from earth, from dirt. You are mistaken. Same. When are we going to learn? When are we going to learn that in tariqat, whatever that you're feeling, whatever that you're thinking, take a step back, don't get drunk. Oh, we see, because you're always drunk. When something hits you, oh, you're ready now to burn the whole world, to burn this person, to send this person to hell. Just because a person made one mistake, you're about to send the person to hell. Which prophet is teaching you that? Your shaykh is teaching you that? They're doing one thing, immediately you're saying this one, oh, calling them the worst of the worst. Who is teaching you that? What kind of honor you have? We must wake up. You understand? Yes, we're coming to the days of Ashura, and there are going to be people that say, oh, look at me, I'm like Hazrat Hussein. Bre, Hazrat Hussein never curses his enemies. And his enemies killed his own children in front of his eyes. He never put one curse on them. What people did to you that you're cursing from top to bottom, you didn't finish, uh, you didn't leave one word that you didn't use to curse. So many things happened to the Prophet ﷺ. Hazrat Hatija, she passed. You know why she passed? She passed because the Quraysh, they put a blockade, they put a ban, a boycott on the Muslims. And she was unwell, she got sick and she passed. Did you ever hear the Prophet ﷺ cursing at them? No. Who did? Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq cursing? Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali cursing? It fits to Ahlul Bayt to curse? No, it fits to the Ahlul Bayt to say, Ummati, Ummati. It fits to the Ahlul Bayt to forgive. So, if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not for you, leave it somewhere else. Don't think everything is for you also. You're not that important that you think everything is for you.
You understand me? So I'm there thinking everything is for them. Ray, wake up, Ray. May Allah forgive me. Make us to become awake in these days. Winds, they are knocking everything down. But it is necessary sometimes to clean the air, clean the atmosphere, everything. You understand? So, inshallah, we just continue. Who cares? Who cares people barking? They've been barking like crazy dogs, like, uh, what do they call Saldran? Saldrans. Yes, they've been barking. Who cares? Caravan is still continue. We don't even turn to look at them. No need. They're dogs. We continue. Just like our share continuing. That's all. Wa min Allah tafiq al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.